And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. And here are the news stories from the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. Oklahoma prison officials said uh, last week that they have imposed lockdowns on a pair of state prisons after two inmates were stabbed and several others were injured in a series of gang attacks that appeared coordinated. Two inmates stabbed were hospitalized briefly after fights erupted simultaneously in several housing units at Dick Connor Correctional Center in Hominy, said Jerry Mossy, spokesman for the Oklahoma Department of Corrections. Ron Culliver, a spokesman for the Hominy Prison, said the attacks involved Hispanic and Native American gangs at the prison. Another round of fights broke out during late August at the Mac Afford Correctional Center in uh, Stringtown, Oklahoma. Several inmates were injured but didn't require hospitalization, Massey said. The two gangs have been feuding with each other for at least two years after a massive fight at the Oklahoma State Reformatory in Granite left two inmates dead and 13 others injured. The dispute grew more heated last year after David Allen Tyner, a 20-year-old Native American, was charged with six counts of first-degree murder in the deaths of four people, including two pregnant women. Some of those victims are suspected of being Hispanics. A nationally acclaimed American Cancer Society fundraising event is coming to Duluth, Minnesota for the very first time on Saturday, October 9th. Making strides against breast cancer program shows the progress we're making together to save lives and create a world with less breast cancer, uh, breast cancer and more birthdays. Participants can help raise funds and awareness to help end this disease. Teams are forming now for the non-competitive pledge-based 5K walk on Saturday, October 9th, starting at 7 a.m. with registration in an 8.30 uh, program at Lake Superior College, 2101 Trinity Road in Duluth, Minnesota. And you can get more information on that from Brenda Beard uh, of the American Cancer Society at 218-529-7627 or at brenda.beard at cancer.org. And we'll put that information up on the board so you have it. The Indigenous Language Institute is holding the first of the Indigenous Language Institute Symposium series on the topic of how Native American communities develop new words for new ideas and items. The two-day symposium titled Native Language Terminology Development will be held on October 11th and 12th at the Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, and Casino Hotel at the Pueblo of, Isl of Isleta in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Topics to be addressed include developing new terminology, approaches and methods used by Native communities, uh, communities and IT industries in creating new words, Native language in information technology, software available to create online language environments such as websites, social network sites, and mobile technology, common adaption of technology and use of technology tools to create envi an environment where heritage language is everywhere and every day for everyone. Also things to do with mobile technology and all kinds of other topics. For more information about the symposium and for registration, you can go to www.ilnative.org or contact Laura Benavidez at 505-820-0311. We'll put that information as well on the board. Here is in a very early notice of the 32nd American Indian Workshop called Approaching Native American Cultures from an Inter-America Perspective, Similarities and Differences, and that's being held on March 31st through April 3rd, 2011 in Grays, Austria. The 211 workshop plans to examine both Native American cultures from an inter-America vantage point, both from a contemporary as well as a historical perspective. Within the wider field of American studies, inter-American studies is taking on the role of transcending national boundaries, both in Europe and the Americas, in order to establish new structures of research and teaching with the potential to revolutionize how people think about the Americas. Contra contributors are invited, which 
will address the following general themes, Native American history from an inter-American perspective, borders and boundaries of the continent and continents, Number three, inter-American studies and a, as an approach to Native American topics. And finally, four, current research. Please uh, submit your proposals for presentation, including a title and an abstract of up to 200 words in a short bio to Hydroon Mortal at hydroon.mortal at UNI. Uh, that's going to be a space G-R-A-Z dot A-T. And we'll put that up on the board by October 1st of this year. Two Native Community Development Financial Institutions are now located in the same building in downtown Lac de Flambeau, Wisconsin. NICAP provides financing and assistance to small businesses and entrepreneurs, while Wigamig provides similar services and financing to homeowners. David Fleming, manager of development services for NICAP, whose offices are in Lac de Flambeau, says this is a very exciting time for us and a very exciting move. We hope that by working with the same, uh, by working from the same location, we can increase our outreach efforts and realize new opportunities that result in more wealth and asset building activities in the Lac de Flambeau region. Fern Ori, executive director of Wigamig, has been in the building for three years now and says this is an enormous opportunity for both organizations to capitalize on shared missions and shared resources. Teachers and educators will gather September 26th through the 28th in Akamo for South Dakota's annual Indian Education Summit. The goal of this summit is to provide solutions to challenges faced by American Indian students and to present educators with programs that have been successful. The conference is being organized by the South Dakota Education Department, the University of South Dakota, the Mid-Central Education Cooperative, the OSHIT, OCT Sikawan Education Consortium and Technology and Innovation in Education. Members of the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community will uh, vote for a tribal president during September in an election that will also gauge how they feel about a new casino resort and spring training baseball complex. Sterling Manuel, Manuel Sr., one of the three candidates challenging incumbent Diane Enos in the September 14 election, said the tribe has turned over too many jobs to non-Indians and the tribal council approved the latest developments against the wishes of the people. Community members are saying we uh, need change before it's too late and we lose our community, he told the Arizona Republic. The agricultural community east of Scottsdale has just 5,400 eligible voters, but its profile in the Phoenix area has been growing despite the recession. In the past 10 years, Salt River has spent more than a half billion dollars on developing its 497 room talking stick resort and Salt River fields for the Diamondbacks and the Colorado Rockies. In her bid for a second in term, Enos faces strong opposition as well from Manuel, along with Chief Tribal Judge Delbert Ray Sr. and a previous tribal president, Juan Ramos. Enos beat Ramos 683 to 431 in September of 2006. And remember that IndianCountryTV.com will be doing some live broadcasting from the Midway of Indian Summer Festival in Milwaukee, Wisconsin this upcoming weekend. Make sure you have your digital link or embedded code for the featured player and you can watch it from your Facebook, MySpace or your own website. And check it out when we're down there on the Midway Stop by if you're in on the Midway and say hi to your relatives all over cyberspace world, which is the Earth. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country. On this edition of the Native News Update, you come back again soon. Miigwech.